Hello and welcome to ProTrader Strategies Market Commentary for Thursday, November the 15th. My name is Eric Wilkinson and some of you may recognize me as the Wolfman from CNBC, Fox Business, or even the Wall Street Journal for my commentary on everything from economic to geopolitical and market analysis. Please keep in mind that everything that we talk about in these market commentaries is not a solicitation to buy or sell any of these securities or strategies. At the end of the day, I'm here to teach you some different strategies that you can then implement into your portfolios, but please do that in your own way. Also, remember that past performance of any trading system or methodology is not necessarily indicative of future results. All right, having that out of the way, let's get it on with the economic data. You know, yesterday, a crazy day, felt like basically a liquidity event. You can see a lot of these markets have kind of turned into bear territory with the massive sell-off we've seen since basically October. Now, that being said, I think it's overdone. I've been talking about this. I'm actually getting really long deltas, so I've added some more deltas uh, to the long side again today that I'll talk about here in a moment. But first of all, let's talk about some overall economic activity. You know, the market, people are talking about a slowdown globally. I'm not seeing a massive slowdown or any kind of really concerning slowdown uh, right now here or across the pond. The numbers are coming in line with expectations, some of them even beating. Those expectations aren't wildly extravagant that we're missing on, and they're not even just uh, you know hunky-dory numbers that we're missing on to uh, make it look like we are pulling back a little bit. We are just trudging along. I've been saying this for months now, and let's, let's confirm that with the overall economic data. First off, uh, we've got Great Britain retail sales not really showing us that kind of... Uh, uh, trajectory, it coming in at negative 0.5%, expected to be a positive 0.2%, so a miss there on Great Britain. But when we start looking here in the United States, we got a lot of economic data here as well. We got our core retail sales, basically stripping out automobiles, airplanes, and things of that nature. Core retail sales came in at 0.7%, expected to be 05 We put back in those cars and whatnot, and we get uh, just retail sales coming in at unchanged, expected to be, uh, or sorry, that's a positive 0.8, expected to be a positive 0.6. They did revise last month's number down slightly, but it didn't make a dent in, uh, it didn't really hurt the overall number. It made it come in line with expectations for the most part with the revision. Philly Fed did come in lower than expected at 12.9, still not terrible, expected to be 20. So it did miss a little bit there, but then we come to the Empire State Manufacturing and it came in at 23.3, expected to be 19.9. So both of those kind of washing each other out. One a nice uh, beat, another one a bit of a miss. Uh, but then we got importer prices coming in at 0.5%, expected to be 0.1%. They did revise last month's number down by uh, three-tenths of a percent. So still a beat on the headline number, even with the revision. And then we've got uh, Quarles speaking later on today. Natural, natural gas inventories coming in at uh, 39 billion cubic feet. And it looks like we are going to be working on getting this crude oil number during the... Uh, webinar here, or sorry, daily market commentary. So yesterday, big sell-off. I mean, nothing was uh, really immune to this sell-off yesterday across the board, whether it was crude oil uh, getting uh, crushed, going down to that $54.75 today, trying to make a little bit of a comeback. It's probably waiting basically on these crude oil inventories that we're waiting on right now too, coming out in a, about four minutes. Uh, then we've got gold futures positive today. Yesterday, you know, gold futures a little bit odd where they were basically pushing higher uh, off of the overall equities coming back. Remember, it's a flight to safety and, and gold usually being that safe haven asset that people to go uh, like to go into. Having said that, you know, Bitcoin and those other type of cryptocurrencies should be something that people throw their money at as well for safe haven when there's problems in the overall equities. But as we can see yesterday, Bitcoin had that same liquidity event. Now, when we see equities tanking and people trying to find places to park their money and we see Bitcoin, uh, which should be somewhat like correlated to gold, right? Uh, that we would expect to push higher. Now, it fell out of bed. It was 
suffering from the same liquidity event that most other people were trying to, you know, capture. When you're having these liquidity events, you kind of dump off the stuff you're just not very confident about in order to put money to work in other places and or park it in cash or maybe even gold in that matter. Uh, but we didn't see that happen with Bitcoin. Obviously, the people that have invested in Bitcoin and we're seeing some of their assets uh, get hurt dumped their Bitcoin as well. So um, Bitcoin not boding well during this kind of market pullback, which doesn't bode well for future um, expectations of the cryptocurrency when the going gets tough. All right, bonds moving higher again today as the market is starting to signal Maybe the Fed has overdone it a little bit. They continue to talk about, continue to raise interest rates, but I think the market is signaling to them it is time to hold off, maybe even for the rest of the year uh, and maybe even into the summer just to see how the rest of the year or the first part of 2019 comes in. Uh, but bonds moving higher by about a half a point today. And then we look at the VIX. Again, I talked about this yesterday. VIX was moving higher yesterday. And we were seeing the overall equities move higher. I said that was a bit of a concerning type of scenario because what was happening, the overall market was probably rallying based on the person who was sell or the peoples that were selling those option contracts to um, the retailer in a sense. And what they have to do is they have to flip and then hedge that trade, right? That's kind of their job. And that's what they were doing yesterday. Once that buying stopped in the equities of that hedge, we saw the overall market start to really come off and late in the day really pick up steam. So that's kind of what I was talking about. It's a bit disconcerting when you see the VIX moving higher with the equities at the same time. So um, always be weary of that uh, happening. But we do have the VIX moving higher today. But that is only because we're seeing the equities continue with that down move. Now, I talked about this yesterday. Uh, Dow Jones wasn't even close to the point of control necessarily, but I felt like it needed to kind of go down there and at least test that in order to kind of shake out all the weak hands and stuff like that. Make sure that that really gets touched so it's behind us now. We've come down to the point of control where the most time and volume has been spent. This is what I had expected, right? A little bit of a bounce here and now trajectory higher is what I'm expecting. Uh, obviously, because I've continued to get long deltas even in this sell-off, I think it's a good opportunity. Um, similarly with the NASDAQ, you know, it's going to test a bit of these extremes. It came down, I said, this is going to act as a major support level for the NASDAQ. If we got down there, I think it's going to. We got the, the 23 Fibonacci extension lined up with the uh, 23 Fibonacci regulars. And um, that is going to be a major line in the sand for the bears to try and push through. I think the bulls will be defending that quite aggressively today. All right. Uh, then with the E-mini S&Ps, they're coming down and testing their Fibonacci extension as well. That's healthy, you guys. Anytime we get those extensions, you know, tested the value area high, came down, it may very well come down, test this value area low. I would like to see, obviously, as I am bullish, it be supported. But I think that this uh, Fibonacci extension on the 23 is going to hold and we'll kind of bounce around right here in and around this uh, point of control for, you know, at least, like I said, the next week or so. And I've been talking about that for about a week now. So I think that it, uh, that theory is coming into fruition. All right, let's take a breakdown of the E-mini S&Ps on the 30-minute candle chart here. Each one of these blue section, a new day. You can see that in the market action overnight inventory after that big sell-off yesterday, tried to get long probably short covering for the most part. Late uh, morning coming into the open, you can see that overnight just slammed to the lows. We got some decent economic data and that's what's trying to make, that's the catalyst for trying to get these equities to move higher right now. Um, and I don't, I don't really see that uh, there's any issue with a move higher here. I think, like I said, it's gonna get a little bit volatile as we kind of bounce in and around here right now. So uh, before I get on to my daily trades, let's take a look at 
Uh, crude oil futures real quick just to see what they're doing off of this economic data. Not a whole lot of move right now, but what we did get was oil inventories, and I'm probably going to cover one of my trades here relatively soon after seeing this economic data point. So we got crude oil inventories, a build of 10.3 million barrels, expected to be a build of uh, 2.9 million barrels. So a massive beat on the crude oil build. I'm telling you, with seeing that number, it's a little bit shocking. I'm going to have to say we might see a bit of a bounce today because over the course of the last couple of or the last month or so, we had a massive sell off. But this is only reinforcing the fact that there isn't a whole lot of demand out there for crude oil. So um, I have put on a trade to the upside in XOM that I might be keeping a very close eye on here today and may even pull the ripcord before we even get started. So crude oil still higher today, despite the fact that we have about an, a 7 million barrel build over than what was expected. So we've already talked about the E-mini SPs. This is the trade that I was talking about, XOP. I put on thinking that we would probably come in line with expectations on this crude oil inventories number, but I was not expecting it to uh, be that much of a build. So having said that, I went into the D's and sold the 70 puts in there for 49 cents. The reason why I sold those, uh, those are XOM, not XOP. Sorry, you guys. I sold XOM, ExxonMobil, which is the gas industry, right? And I sold those, uh, what were they, the XOM 70 puts in there. Because I'm able to get down basically below, well below this low, this Fibonacci extension. I mean, I am selling 70 puts in XOM way down here for 49 cents. It seems like we found a bottom here. It's testing the value area low. I think that's a little overdone to the downside. I'm going to keep a close eye on this today as with that crude oil build will not bode well for ExxonMobil or any of the oil producers. So the market setting up quite nicely on a chart. I don't like the economic data points on it. So quick, easy, uh, quick, itchy trigger finger in this one as of that inventory number. I'm going to be keeping an eye on it, but right now uh, getting bullish deltas in XOM. Caterpillar, another one where you found this nice bottom down here where it did break below the Fibonacci level. And as a matter of fact, maybe the real level that I should draw a line in in here is at the 111 for Caterpillar. But with the high implied volatility that we've been experiencing, I'm able to get these D's puts out to the 110 level. So I'm short D's 110 puts 12 or sorry, 110 puts $2 below where this big support level has been found at that 112 level. So I'm below that by a couple of dollars, able to collect another dollar 22 on that. So that lowers my break even below that 110. Uh, it's actually 108, um, 78 is where my break even is on Caterpillar right now. So added some more bullish deltas there. I'm also trying to get out of the Under Armour um, shorts that I have. I'm short at, uh, what price is that? I'm short at 18 and a half. Market's not really that close. I think we're about a dollar 30 some odd away. But I wanted to put in that Under Armour trade just as a precaution to, um, if, Anything crazy happened today with a market spike down, I might be able to get those. Not quite close enough today, as you can see, but I um, was thinking we might be able to come down and test the value area or something like that. I'm going to be looking to cover those relatively soon if we get a pullback. But right now, just working a limit order at the 18 and a half level where I got into those. And that's about it for today. Uh, other than later on this afternoon, I'm going to be doing a webinar on synthetic shorts. How do you deal with market volatility? Is it going to go up? Is it going to go down at this point? It feels like it's here to stay for a little while. So if it's here to stay at these levels, this short synthetic short strategy is going to be awesome for this type of environment. So check it out at protraderstrategies.com. Sign up for it. It's a heck of a lot easier than going out there and shorting just about any stock. You don't have to deal with the hard to borrows, all that stuff, maintenance, all of that's out the window, lower margins as well. So check it out. I'll show you how to set up a synthetic short stock today. All right. If you can't take that, take it easy.